The journey begins with a 40 minute flight from Kathmandu to Lukla. For many people this will be the smallest plane they have ever travelled on and an exciting start to the journey. This flight takes us to the Kumbu region of Nepal. The planes flying to Lukla from Kathmandu have no radar system on board, so they cannot take off until they are told that the weather conditions are suitable where we will be landing. Because of this, long delays occur regularly. Lining the streets of Lukla, it is common to see porters offering their services, but most people visiting the area would have these organised by now. Considering the remote location, the village and the skies above it can be surprisingly busy. In between the planes carrying tourists, you can see army and rescue helicopters at the airport. Luka has a variety of shops and lodges where one can have basic western style meals and pick up any last minute items for trekking or climbing ahead. There are many restaurants in Lukla, so you can have a meal before you begin the first day's trekking. A typical menu in Lukla will have a large variety of foods like fried rice, noodles, soup, pizza, momos, breakfast cereals, hot and cold drinks and most junk foods you can get at home. People usually try to avoid eating meat from here onwards as there is no cold storage and the possibility of a sick stomach is very high. The journey from Lukla to Pak Ding should take between two to three hours going at a slow and steady pace. The trail starts with a gentle climb up the mountainside on the left bank of the Dukosi River which provides a lovely view for most of today's walking. There is a well-worn path with steps leading you both upwards and down, but by the time you reach Pakding, you will be almost 200 metres lower than you were at Lukla. There is a large amount of accommodation available at Pakding. The Namaste Lodge is a three-storey building with a large dining room, a full bar and restaurant, and a cyber cafe. The quality is very basic. The rooms come with a bed, a mattress and one pillow. There are no electrical sockets and toilets are shared. Today's trekking will take somewhere between 5 and 6 hours depending on your fitness level. The journey from Pak Ding starts off very easy, following the Dukosi River Valley below and above and all around you are surrounded by rhododendron forests. There are several small villages along the way to stop for some food or drinks, like this one in Manjo. As you leave Manjo in the direction of Namche, you enter what is known as the Sagaramatha National Park. To enter you have to buy a ticket and fill out a form. You will need to show your passport here and provide a passport sized photograph. Several times you will have to use the suspension bridges to cross the Dukosi River. Locals have decorated the sides of the bridges with prayer flags, although there is no need for prayers as the bridges are all made of steel and feel very secure. On the far side of this bridge is a village known as Jorsail. There are no shops after this village and it is advised to stock up on water and food. A short walk past Jorsail there is a suspension bridge to cross and after this the trek gets surprisingly difficult. The walk to Namche is very steep and continually upwards. There is no level or downward walking. This section of the walk may take two or more hours. People of average fitness may find that they can walk for several minutes only and then need to take a short break to catch their breath. At this altitude your body will notice the lack of oxygen in the air. It will be especially noticed if you attempt things like running up a stairs or exert your body in any way. As you reach Namche you have to pass a police checkpoint. Here they will ask to see the ticket you purchased at the entrance to the Sagarmatha National Park. Namche Bazaar is the most important town in the Kumbu region, the land of the Sherpa people. This town is located at 3,440 metres above sea level. After the difficulty of the last day, you will feel the rest day at Namche is well deserved but the idea behind the rest or acclimatization day is to climb high during the day and then sleep lower. This will help your body adjust to the altitude more easily. The most common walk to take on the rest day is to the Everest View Hotel. From here on a clear day there are spectacular views of Everest. This walk should only take around two hours leaving you plenty of time to explore Namche Bazaar. 
A market takes place every morning in the town centre. Many traders come from Tibet to trade here, on the far side of the Himalayas. Looking from a distance, it looks like a second-hand clothes market, with everything spread out on the ground. But in fact, most of the goods you will find here are new imitation climbing gear. There is a big difference between the tourist prices and local prices. So if you want to buy something here and have a porter or a guide, get them to make the purchase for you. Almost anything you might need for the trek ahead can be bought on the streets of Namche Bazaar. Items like down jackets, sleeping bags, shoes, socks, gloves, scarves, suntan cream, lip balm, tissue paper, maps and water. Namche Bazaar has many internet cafes making it one of the few places in the region where trekkers can access the internet. The internet cafes connect via satellites and so the resulting connection speed is slow. The village also contains a German bakery, well known in the region for providing good quality western food, including pizza. The walk from Namche to Tenboche should take between five and seven hours. It begins with a very steep and tiring walk up out of the village. There is a large amount of construction taking place in Namche, with many new lodges being built. The sound of stone being cut is very quickly replaced with the sound of the wind blowing in the trees and the calming sound of the yak bells. The atmosphere has changed so quickly. Tengboche Monastery can be seen in the distance on a clear day, as well as the summit of Everest. After about 20 minutes walking, the ground levels off and you'll find your pace increase. After an hour or two of level, easy trekking, you have to walk downhill, losing much of the altitude you gained over the last day, so you can use this old bridge to cross the river. but the altitude that was lost must now be gained with a tough two-hour uphill walk. Most people will stop here and have their lunch before attempting to make the final push for Tengboche. The price of a bottle of soft drinks here might be 50% higher than it was in Lukla, although meals like rice, soup and bread will be mostly the same. The lack of oxygen in the air is really noticeable at this stage. Only the Sherpas seem to be able to scale the steep hill at a reasonable pace. Everyone else is choosing to take it slow and steady. Tengboche village is located at an altitude of 3,867 metres. In the village is an important Buddhist monastery, the largest in the Kumbu region. The structure was built in 1923 but was destroyed by fire in 1989. It is rebuilt with the help of volunteers and the provision of foreign aid. From here there are great views of Everest and Amadablam. All the traffic heading towards Everest passes through the centre of Tengboche, so it's a great place to relax and watch all the yaks, porters and trekkers go about their business. There is a large green area in the centre of the village for camping and several lodges to choose from. There is an internet cafe here, but the electricity supply does not always work.
There is a bakery in the centre of the village which claims to be the highest in the world and at nearly 4,000 metres it's easy to believe. The chocolate cakes here are delicious and taste as if they were freshly baked yesterday. The quality in the lodge is a little lower here than in Namche. The dining area is uncomfortable with the small stove only providing heat to the people sitting directly around it. Most people will eat their food by 7 p.m. and go to bed. The walk from Temboche to Dingboche starts off gently sloping downhill, but shortly after crossing the river, we head uphill and spend most of the day walking along the river valley. Many people visiting this region of Nepal will only go as far as Tengboche. So from here onwards, there are less trekkers, porters and yaks along the path. There are some lovely family-run tea houses to stop in along the way, serving up tasty drinks like hot lemon or yak milk tea. <laughs> Overall, it is an easy but long day's trekking, with the journey taking up to six hours. At this altitude, many people will suffer mild headaches and shortness of breath. The village of Dingboche is located in the Chokhong Valley at an altitude of 4,530 metres. Trekkers will usually spend two nights in Dingboche for acclimatisation purposes. The village relies heavily on tourists, with lodges and tenting areas comprising most of Dingboche. The Imja River flows directly east of the village. Most people choose to spend the rest day hanging around the village. There is a bar here with a pool table. Expensive internet cafe and satellite phones are available at a high price if you feel like phoning home. The day starts off with a steep climb up the edge of a hill, providing a great view down into the Chokhong Valley, with the island peak visible at its end. Most people take a short break here and prepare themselves for the long march ahead. Today's walk would take up to six hours or more, depending on how the altitude affects you. As you walk along the side of the valley, if you look down to the left at the base, you can see a small village called Periche. There is a medical centre in Periche where emergencies can be treated. For minor ailments, there is a fixed charge. This charge enables the doctors to be able to treat the locals for free. Most of the walking today is along relatively level ground. There are few signs of civilization along this route, so if you need to refresh with a drink or some food, do so at the nearest available shop. For the last hour or two, the ground becomes steep and rocky until you reach the small village of Loboche. Compared to places like Dingboche or Tengboche, there is not really much here. Two or three lodges and a camping area make up Loboche. The village is quite exposed and the high winds can cause a lot of dust to blow around the village. Because of this, most trekkers choose to relax indoors. The number of trekkers passing through this village can vary greatly and it is common for there to be no accommodation available. Guests may be asked to share a room with a stranger or even sleep on the dining room floor. There is no way around this as the nearest lodge is many hours walk away. Today we have to walk for a little over 5 kilometres. It does not sound like much, but at this altitude it may take anywhere up to 5 or even 6 hours. There is no clear path and you have to walk over loose rocks, which add to the difficulty. 
The small village of Gorak Shep is actually the original base camp for climbers heading towards the summit of Everest. The small village is located at the base of a peak called Kalapathar, which appears as a big brown bump below the impressive south face of Pomeroy. Many trekkers in the region of Mount Everest will attempt to summit Kalapathar since it provides the most accessible point to view Mount Everest from base camp to peak. Due to the structure of Everest, the peak cannot be seen from base camp. part of this trek, the three hour walk to base camp is difficult and dangerous. There are several crashed helicopters in the base camp region. Because the air is so thin at this altitude, landing and taking off can be difficult. Unlike the rest of the trek, there is no path to follow here, so it is not recommended to attempt this without an experienced guide. The journey takes us over the Kumbu Glacier, finally ending at the base of the Kumbu Icefall. You can say you are at base camp when you are looking up the Kumbu Icefall. The Icefall is regarded as one of the most dangerous stages of the South Col route to Everest Summit. Depending on what time of year it is, you may see the tents of support crews for climbers attempting to summit Everest. The months of April and May being the busiest times at base camp. <laughs> 